everybody. Are you awake after lunch? OK, good. <laughs> I'm going to talk a little fast. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm Julia Wester. I live in Seattle. And I want to ask you, how many of you think that you should be allowed to make more decisions at work? Show of hands. <clears throat> I think so, too. And so today, I'm going to do a crash talk and how to make it safe for that to really happen at, at the office. So back in the day, this dude named Taylor said that the managers should make all the decisions because they were the smartest ones. But we learned from Darwin that it's not always about being intelligent. It's about being the most responsive to change. So you know, which one is more responsive, having lots of people making good decisions or just managers? We still hold on to the thought that managers can do that because we think if we try hard enough, we can make the perfect plan, we can act it, and success will just follow naturally. But the complex truth is, is that we work in uncertain situations. We have environments that we don't really understand and can't know no matter how hard we try. We have people that we cannot predict how they will act, even given some instruction or plan. And we have an environment that if you introduce the same stimuli more than once, we might get different effects or, or things that happen. And these are the three gaps. Essentially, they tell us that we cannot plan our way out of uncertainty. OK, so there's two approaches to getting things done. One is the instruction approach. That's doubling down on info, instructions, and controls. But the other is the direction-based or intent-based approach, where we tell people what we need, we give them the autonomy to make decisions, and the opportunity to reflect. Now, that's a fundamental change to what we do, but it's necessary to make a fundamental change for a deep-seated problem. A Band-Aid doesn't fix a broken bone, and a layer on what we do already isn't going to help. So leaders have to be willing to do some things. You have to prioritize. We're going to talk about that in a second. You have to let others make decisions that you might be accountable for, and that's scary, but there's a way to make that safe. And workers have to be willing to do some things, too. Step up and make decisions when you're given the opportunity, because we're going to try to make it safe to do so. You have to communicate often. It's not just because they don't trust you. It's so they can feel safe in giving you that power. And you have to assess the status quo critically. Now, leaders have to decide how much control to give. Too much is chaos. Too little is frustration. 63% of us say we feel frustrated. What that means for leaders is they can give more control right away with the skills and clarity we already have. So David Marquet wrote this book, Turn the Ship Around. And it is a great experience report on how to deploy intent-based leadership in situations where they've been dominated by instruction. And there's some basic steps that we can take. The first is that leaders have to answer the Spice Girls question. Tell us what you want, what you really, really want. What wins in a conflict between priorities? That's our main effort. And once they understand what the main effort is, because sometimes they may not even really know, they can get the message across via a brief. And there are some templates that you can use to help you think through this. But especially make sure that you say explicitly known constraints or anti-goals, which are conditions we know we need to avoid. When the workers get that brief, we will do something called a back brief, where we reiterate what we heard to make sure we're on the same page. We make the best plan we can for now, knowing it's not going to be perfect. And we share what we think we'll need to get that plan done. Now, this is going to be an iterative process, especially early on. But leaders need to give some space while still finding that line of being able to support as well. And workers have to keep the communication open so that leaders don't feel like they have to jump back in and take control. Because we know that plans can't be perfect, we have to be willing to always assess how things are going and adapt quickly. That also makes leaders feel safer in letting you have more control because they trust you'll catch it if it's not going well. So if we have this bi-directional communication, we start getting a situation in which we're teaching everyone in the organization how to be a thinker, a problem solver, a learner. And when we have that at scale, we can make decisions and be really fast and win that Darwinian sort of exercise. If we do this at every level of the organization, cascading down, that makes our organization one that can survive in market conditions that are really brutal because we can keep up with change and fast pace of our economy. So some things to watch out for, punishing good intentions. If someone makes a mistake and it's in your guardrails, you cannot punish them. They will stop making decisions. Also, a lot of times we have metrics that, that actually take away from our ability to meet our goals. So we want to be careful with that. 
To get started, pick a small decision. Just try your best, you're gonna screw it up, but keep working and keep doing it, stick with it. So thanks, you can do it.